The Defender 2020 continues to make headline news in the automotive press, including my own video that I called Reality Check. And the purpose of the video was basically to remove all the hype and actually explain how this vehicle, this new vehicle, the new Defender, was actually quite a big disappointment to Defender fans. And I have to now defend myself, and I will do that. But I'm going to start with the idea and concept that I have a beef with Land Rover. And my reaction to that is, yes, I do, but it's not the beef you think it is. I'm going to start with a comment that I received on LinkedIn. And this is a gentleman, his name is Steve, and he was once a, a Land Rover off-road instructor. And he accused me and said, you clearly have a beef with Land Rover for some reason. Let me first put this all in perspective so you can understand and, and perhaps I will be able to qualify what I'm about to say. This is a postcard. Three nights ago, I had a charity event where one of my uh, films was shown and we gave away a whole lot of prizes and we gave all of the ticket holders a postcard. It's like a channel postcard. Uh, for you naysayers out there, postcards, Land Rovers. See, the accusation is that I am, oh, I'm just Toyota, Toyota. Okay, am I Toyota, Toyota, Toyota? I'm as much Land Rover as Toyota. Just look at the channel banner and count the Land Rovers. And I don't even own one. My first book was unashamedly Land Rover fanboy based. Okay, and then I woke up to the fact that being a motoring journalist, you have to have an even hand. How many Toyotas do you see on the postcard we gave away? I've got a little study. See how many Toyotas you can spot. None. How many Land Rovers did you see? Part of what I do for a living is I uh, take photographs and they are available on a website called Toloa Gallery and people purchase prints, high quality art prints of my photography. How many Toyota albums do you see here? The beef I have with Land Rover is not a brand based beef. I mean, people say, yes, but what about the Toyota 79 that I drive as my work vehicle? Uh, it's got this and it's got, I agree. I so agree with you. It's got many faults. This is not a, a competition of what vehicle has what faults. It's a competition of what vehicle will be most suitable for me personally. And the beef I have with Land Rover is that Land Rover have let us down, particularly and specifically Land Rover Defender owners. I adored my Defender. I, and I'm not kidding here. I've been looking at the price lists. I went through, uh, not long ago, the, 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 the website to see which one I would buy. It was like Christmas shopping. There were so many different options. It was wonderful. It was just so nice. That's what four-wheel drive is all about. Building your vehicle. But I can only build it with Land Rover, with Land Rover parts. Very difficult to build it with other parts. Now, the point I made in my video about the winch fitting. Yes, you can fit a winch, but that was not my point. I did not say you could not fit a winch. I didn't say that. Steve himself. Uh, mentioned Ronnie Dahl, he, he, you know, he didn't have the, he admitted that he didn't have the, you know, the, the, the nous to be able to figure out the, the track, the terrain response to get through the sand. But 
Why are you even mentioning that? I mentioned three times in my video that it is an exceptional off-road vehicle. And Land Rover lovers out there, please listen to this. I have said it again and again and again. I do not know how many times. The Defender is an exceptional off-road vehicle. Ter terrain response is an exceptional traction control system. It's brilliant. There, I've said it again. Please get it into your head that I believe the Defender is an amazing vehicle. But they've shortchanged us. It's not a Defender. I agree with Richard Hammond when he said, this is the best discovery you've ever made. Richard Hammond, if you're watching these videos, you are absolutely, you have hit the nail on the head. The Defender is the workhorse. What Land Rover have created and called Defender is not a workhorse. It's not a Defender and does not qualify for the name Defender. And that's my beef. You've let us down. I am, I'm about to buy another vehicle for the channel right now. And despite, and this is absolute honesty, despite all of the hassle with TFL, fast lane car and all of that stuff and, and all of the negative press, and there has been a lot. And TFL have received their third Defender and they've put a very positive spin on it. But I'm a little dis actually very disappointed. And the reason is that the, the Land Rover uh, treated them well, yes they did, by, uh, for the same amount of money, sold them a much more valuable vehicle. But that's not the vehicle they bought and it's not the vehicle they wanted. The reason why they wanted the base vehicle is because it was going to be better at the job that they had planned for it and that was to do some very serious off-road driving. And the new one has extra weight, it's, it's much heavier, it's got more bits and pieces on it and it has 20 inch wheels which we all know is just a bad idea if you're going off-road. They just don't work. I'm not going to argue that fact anymore. So while it, they've put a good spin on it, I was looking forward to seeing what that basic Defender could achieve. Now I will see what this one will achieve, that new one will achieve, and I'll, I'll kind of, I, I've, I, feel, I feel short-changed. I'm still considering it because I would love to get back into behind the wheel of a Land Rover, but you must understand, this is my work. This isn't a hobby. I need a vehicle that I can pack up and take on extreme and difficult and rough off-road tracks in the wilderness where there is no internet connection. There is no cell connection at all. At best, I've got a cell phone. And my yardstick is, will the vehicle be able to do a track like the Canning Stock Route? A Canning Stock Route, 1,600 kilometers, and it's tough. You need to carry a lot of fuel. So the vehicle is going to be heavy and camping gear and a lot of food. You're talking 20 days in the wilderness. Will it be able to do it? Will the Defender be able to do it? Yes, but here's the problem. If it breaks, I'm buggered. I'm stuffed. How, for example, would you get a breakdown service on the Canning Stock route? No flatbed could ever get there. So a Land Rover mechanic with his special tools and special computers would have to drive there or go there by helicopter. The Defender's bonnet might as well have a no user serviceable parts inside sticker on the front. Because it's so electronic, you can't fix it. Very difficult to fix. Not that you can't fix it. Very difficult for the ordinary bloke to fix. Just like it's very difficult for the ordinary bloke to fit a winch. There is a series of videos by this guy here. They call themselves Powerful UK LTD. And they have fitted a winch to a Defender. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, no, five, five videos, five. This proves my point. There are five videos 
on how to fit a winch. When I fitted my last winch onto my ARB bull bar, which they don't make, I just, I mean, that was the point of that story was the world's biggest accessory maker are not making accessories for the Land Rover Defender at this point. Why not? Why? Why? I, I don't know why. There's something going on. They make it for almost every vehicle that you can buy. They make kit for. Even vehicles that sell in quite small numbers. But not the Defender 20. Why? Because of this. It's complicated. I fitted a winch to my Land Cruiser, the last build I did, and I think the total screen time was probably less than one minute. That's 20 minutes, that's about 40 minutes. The Okay, I rest my case. Yes, you can fit accessories, but it's difficult. And Land Rover are trying, this is my view, to capture the morning, to corner the market in accessories for the Land Rover Defender 2020. And I don't like this at all. For example, they have a roof rack, which has an interesting design. Okay, fine, yet to test it. I'm not sure if I would want one, but had interesting design. And I imagine they've tested it well. And then they have even a rooftop tent. Question, is the rooftop tent, is the gauze in the rooftop tent suitable for Africa? Is it suitable for Australia? They use quite different products in tents developed here in Australia, as opposed to UK, Europe, South Africa, for example. Why? Because the insects are different and they have different habits. Land Rover are not experts in making tents. They're not experts in making roof racks. They're not experts in making bulbars. Guys like ARB and TJM, and they're the experts, and the tent manufacturers like Alucab and Quick Pitch and Easy On, and there are 101 of them. They make tents because that's their speciality. Land Rover are moving into a part of the industry that they know very little about. I'm sorry, they know very, very little about. Don't pretend that you know very little, a lot about it. You're guessing. So if I am going to equip a, a Land Rover, I am going to want other accessories from other manufacturers because I know what's good and what works. And I don't trust that Land Rover have the expertise necessary. The cost is also quite high, although not enormously high. I didn't think their accessories were stupidly priced. They could have been, uh, but they're not, actually. I thought, OK, that that's, surprised me a bit. Good news. But I'm trapped. So please don't you know, come after me and say that I am biased towards a particular brand as I said before, I would love to be driving a Defender. And if they had built that Defender with coil springs, and I know they're talking about coil springs, but they only want to put it in the short wheelbase. And I, I am, when I hear this, you're only putting it in the short wheelbase, and I think, whatever for? You don't need it in the short wheelbase. The short wheelbase is the fun run around 4x4 four four fun thing that you'll drive around town. It's not a serious workhorse. Leave the electronic suspension in there. It's fine. It's not a workhorse. The long wheelbase is the one that needs the coil spring suspension. The very fact that Land Rover are thinking, oh, we'll just put the coils in the short wheelbase, says to me that you know nothing about the car that you're building. The, let's put it this way. You know nothing about your market. You are so unbelievably ignorant. And I, I, I watch and read a lot of the comments in my own video. And so many of them are saying, oh, you know, I wish that, you know, they should have consulted you. It's very flattering. I wish they should have consulted you. And maybe they should consult more or Thanks for the kind words, but they did. They didn't contact me directly, but I know two people who Jaguar Land Rover consulted when developing the Defender. Both have said to me, they appeared not to listen at all, 
and they had decided what they wanted to build long before we entered the meeting. They were ignored. Completely ignored. I would have been ignored too. Complete waste of time. Those people said to them things like, have a look to see what other vehicles that do well in very rugged environments, how they're designed and how they're built. Go and have a look at Nissan. Go and have a look at Toyota's four-wheel drive. Go and have a look at the Mercedes Gelanderwagen 461 series and take your cues from that. And of course, your own Defender. Of course, they didn't. They didn't, I believe, because they didn't know how. I was told that most of the people in that meeting room were young, very young. One of those two people told me that um, he explained, um, what about if you're, and he just said it out of the blue, you know, what happens if you're crossing China? Now, he's, in his mind, he, he's just driven across China into Mongolia and crossed the entire thing. And he'd done it a couple of times, and that was his vision of, you know, where you would need, you know. And he was talking about extremely remote, very rough going travel. Surely that's what the Defender is going to be designed for. That's what the old one was good at. Surely you're doing the same. And he was, res the response he got from a young chap at the table and said, oh, I went to China, it wasn't difficult. He had been to Beijing this person, and that was it. And he said to me that he realized when he walked out, he just said to me, what a, he knew at the time, what a complete and utter waste of time. And so our worst fears, and I'm speaking now from a Land Rover Defender fan point of view. If I, I moved to, to, to Toyota, because I, because they're, they're better at doing the job that I needed doing. As I said, I'm a professional and I needed a work vehicle. And I particularly like the 70 series Land Cruiser because it's what the Defender should have become. A basic, practical, adaptable, versatile, workhorse, very strong, low range gearing, optional differential locks, minimal electronics, only electronics in the engine, nothing else. It ticks all the boxes. So I use, that's what I use them. I don't use Toyotas because I'm a Toyota fanboy. I couldn't care less. And if you're familiar with my channel and know some of my videos, I've had a go at Toyota as well about their brakes, about their lack of warranties, uh, warranty uh, issues. I've had a go, and the fact that the, fa that the, the, the 70 series rear axle, actually if you want the perf best performance out of the vehicle, you have to modify the rear axle. This is, re I, I've said it. I don't, I'm not a Toyota fanboy. I'm not an anything fanboy, okay? I'm not a Land Rover fanboy either. The purpose of my videos is to lay things flat on the table and say, there guys, have a look at what this vehicle actually is and what you are buying. When I went through the menu of the Land Rover, on the Land Rover website, building my own Defender, I was saying no, 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 no. Because almost every single option was electronics based. What I want is a basic workhorse, basic. Basic cloth seats, basic coil springs, optional differential locks. We, yeah, I do have a beef with you, Land Rover. I do, because you've let us down. So I will buy another Toyota 79 series. Or should I get a Suzuki Jimny? Suzuki Jimny, Land Rover, I know you look at it and you laugh. That's because you're snobs. The, if you built, if you had built a Jimny, the, the, the concept of the Jimny, that concept in the Defender's body, 
you would have a top seller like you would not believe. You would not be able to make enough of them. Surely you want to sell cars. Surely you want to sell cars. And those people that say, oh, Andrew, step into the new world. You know, this is, this is the new world, you know, grow up. I understand where you're coming from. But when you are exp doing expedition work and you are in the middle of nowhere and you do not have internet connection, the internet does not exist. You don't want to be relying on electronics. You just don't because when it fails, you cannot fix it. And then you are in big trouble. I don't want an electronic car. And I think I, my opinion is shared by 90% of Land Rover Defender owners. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe and click the notifications bell so you don't miss our weekly videos.